How's it going everyone? John here and welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be giving you guys a little bit more of an in-depth look on how to go ahead and put things together for a scene. In my last video I did talk about more about the information that you see here just because there was a lot of stuff that I wanted to talk about on here but the reason why I didn't create an actual scene for that one was because everyone's scenes are going to be different and there's no way that I can go and mimic everything in a video. So with that being said, if you haven't seen that video, definitely go ahead and take a look at the card above and you can click on it inside the video description below. But what I, what I want to see is if you guys actually do want a video like that where I go and show how you add an image, how to add a browser source and so on and so forth, that video will be very long and I'll only do it on request and I need to get a lot of requests for me to go and do that. Otherwise, you really just need to go in here and just mess with it yourself. Trial and error, you know, that's the best way you're really going to learn. Because if you if you just watch a video and someone's showing you how to do it, that's one thing. And then if you go in there and you mess with it yourself and you see how, you know, things can go wrong and you, then you figure it out on your own, you know, you, you definitely learn by doing so I can create that video where I show you the basics and kind of go over some of those things. But like I said, that video definitely needs to have a lot of requests for something like that. So let me know in the comment section below. And if we get enough requests for it, then I'll go ahead and do it only if it's on high demand. So what I'm going to do in this video is I am going to kind of show you how to quickly kind of put a scene together or... Um, kind of getting you situated a little bit using the ones that are going to be like the most most used. Now this video will be pretty long just because of the fact that there is going to be quite a bit of stuff that I'm going to be throwing in here and giving you good explanations for it. So that being said, let's go ahead and actually jump into the video. So first thing for the scenes, I've explained this before. The best way that I like to explain it is like using PowerPoint. Your scenes are your slides, your sources are your information you put into that slide, and your canvas is the slide that you're working on. So what we're going to first do is we're going to go up here to the top left under themes. And inside of themes, you're going to have a list of a bunch of different things here. You could choose colors, you could choose, you know, game genre or category, and that will just kind of make it easier for you. And they also have your widget themes. Widget themes are going to be stuff when people follow, donate, host, etc. So you can have all that stuff all set up too. And what we're going to do here is I'm going to grab one. Let's go with something like this. So this one is being used for Apex. And basically this is what you would see. So you'll have like the name. And this will probably be someone who followed, someone who donated and stuff like that. And this is everything that you'll get. You'll get your starting soon. You probably get a few other different variants here. Like maybe your Be Right Back, Intermission, and Stream Offline, and stuff like that. You'll have these different types of alerts. You'll have these for your actual panels and stuff like that, which is pretty nice. But this is everything you'll see. Yes, yeah, so you'll be right back. Uh, stream starting soon. <clears throat> stuff like that. So once you find one you like, go ahead and click on Install Overlay. And it will go ahead and install it for you. Wait for it to finish up. And then it will bring you right to your editor. Now it's already got everything set up for you. I'm going to go and mute that. There we go, because I don't want to keep seeing that moving around. But it's already got everything set up for you. And if you don't want something, maybe you don't want Wraith. Maybe you want to have Pathfinder. So what I did was I clicked on the little tiny eyeball. And if you have a slash through it, it means it's not being visible. And, you know, you just get rid of the ones you don't want. You can even delete them if you don't want them. Just click delete on your keyboard, click OK, or you can right click and then you can go to remove and then that will remove it. So once you once you have the one you want for your starting soon, you're good to go there. And then if you go to your live scene here, you can rename them and everything as well. So if you right click, go to rename, you can rename it anything you want. So here it has your alert boxes and this is where your alert and everything is going to be. Now, alert box is going to be when people follow, when they host, when they donate and stuff like that. It's going to pop something up on the screen. So let me see if I can test it and see if it shows anything. It might. All right. So this is my generic one that I have already set up for myself. 
And mine's all like Star Wars related type stuff. So that's why that one showed up. Um, so we won't even worry about that. Um, but if you don't have one that's set up, if you don't have a widget set up for alert box, that's completely fine. I'll show you guys how to do that too. But you pretty much have everything that you need. Now what they do is they add things into folders, which are nice. The only downside to folders is it will have everything highlighted as soon as you open it. It's the only thing I don't like about folders. So if you want some things that will be hidden, even if you, you know, click on the main folder, it highlights everything. So if we just click on that, it's just going to highlight this. But this is going to be your stream labels. Stream labels are basically a little text file that's going to be on your computer that will then send over the information because basically here it's got it to where it's got the most recent subscriber. So like once you have the, the like overlay and everything that you like already submitted in there, like an installed or whatever, it's pretty much ready to go most of, most of the time. I mean, you really don't need to mess with anything. I mean, as you can see, like for mine, it's already showing, you know, who was, the last person to be a subscriber, who was the last person to follow, who was the last person to donate and stuff like that. So you already see that information already populating. Even if you've never set up your stream labels before, it's already going to do it for you. It's pulling that information from your Twitch. Now for your webcam, you know, it's it's got the border. You can either keep the frame. You can get rid of the frame if you want to, if you don't want a frame at all. Now for your webcam and everything, you guys can resize all these things too. So if it seems too small, seems too large, maybe you want to move it, you can do that too. So I can take the webcam, I can take the whole webcam folder if I want to, and I can move it around. Just left click and drag. Maybe I want this to be a little bit smaller. I'll grab one of these little boxes on the side, I'll left click, and I'll drag it, make it larger, smaller, whatever. You know, all that stuff's there. Maybe I don't want this. Maybe I just want to get rid of that. And, you know, I just click on the little eyeball and it's good to go. It's gone. So, I mean, you definitely have a lot of different type of options here. But maybe you want to add some more to it. Maybe you want to, say, add in a... Maybe you want to add in a bit goal. So you'll click on bit goal. Click on add source. Add new source. And here, now you'll be able to give yourself a bit goal. Maybe you want it to be 2000. I already have one set up here. So like my big goal is set for 2000 and it's got, you know, 237 days to go. But basically what you'll do is you give it a title, you give it an amount you want, how much you're already starting with, and then, you know, when you want it to end. And then it just gives you this right here, kind of showing you the information. And then under visuals, you can choose if you want it to be standard or if you want it to be condensed. So standard You'll have this information here kind of hanging outside. I don't really like that, so I keep it with condensed. And it just puts it all right there. You could change the colors and everything. You could change the thickness of the bar. You could change the font. Once you have all that squared away, then go ahead and click on done. And now you have it right here. So then you can make it smaller. You can make it larger. You can move it around. You can do whatever you want with it. So, I mean, all that stuff's pretty easy to do. The thing about Streamlabs OBS is it's very user friendly. It's very newbie friendly. So this one, you don't have to do a lot of manual entering like you would have to if you were on OBS Studio or if you were using XSplit. So that's pretty much how this all works. Most of the time, it's already pre-generated information for you. It's very self-explanatory information. But like I said, if you guys want a video of me showing you every single one of these things, to my knowledge... I have no problems doing that. It's just going to be a much longer video. So one of the other things too, and I want to make sure that I'm going to cover this, is the things that you're going to be using the most are going to be stuff like image. Image is going to be if you're wanting to add in your own overlay, if you don't want to use any of the themes, and maybe you want to probably have maybe a picture of your dog or a picture of your family or something like that on your stream or something. I don't know. Any type of image, it could be a sponsor for something like that. You know, you can do that. You can even do an image slideshow if you're wanting to do something like that. Now, browser source. Browser source is going to be where you're going to take a link from like Streamlabs OBS and something like that could be... Here, let me actually get out of here real quick. So if you go to your dashboard... And then if you go into widgets, where's my widgets? Go into widgets, go into 
stream box or alert box, sorry. And you get this linker here. It's your little widget URL. So if you make any changes to any of your stuff here, this will change. And if you wanted to add in a browser source, you could. You just simply make all the changes, click save on each one of the sections, click copy, and then you copy that. And then you bring it over into your editor, go into your browser source, click add, add new browser source, put in the link, click done, and then it will give you everything you need. So we don't need that anymore, so we'll get rid of that. Another thing that you guys will be using quite a bit is going to be your video capturing device. This will be for capture cards, this will be for webcams. Now if you are streaming directly off your PC, like PC games, not a capture card for a console or anything, then you'll use stuff like display capture, game capture, most of the time it's going to be game capture. Sometimes if it doesn't work, you got to use display capture and maybe at times window capture. Um, whenever I'm doing stuff like uh, 2DS streams or something like that, I have to use a window capture for mine. And that's just because it captures a specific program that you select whenever you use it. Another thing that you'll be using too is if you're wanting to physically put in like information like text, you can do the text right here. You just basically click on this, add source, add that. You go ahead and, you know, you type in anything you want here. You can change the font size. You can change the font itself. You can change its style, color, everything. So, I mean, you definitely have some custom ability there too. And another thing that you're going to be using quite a bit of is going to be alert boxes. Alert boxes, what I showed you earlier, whenever I had my little uh, droid come up whenever someone follows. And that's very easy to set up too. Again, if you go into your dashboard, you can mess with it inside your widgets. Now for bit goals, and I already showed you guys how to do that. That might be something you're going to want to do if you stream on Twitch. But donation goal is definitely a big one. It's the same way as setting it up as it is for a bit goal. You basically just give it a title. You give it the amount you're trying to raise. You give it how much you're starting with. If you're starting at zero, you put zero. If you're starting with more, you put more. And then if you have a certain time that you want it to be, like a certain date that you want it to end, but then in there too, hit start and, you know, you customize the bar and all that jazz and you're good to go. Another thing that you do see sometimes is streamers will go and put a thing like a chat box. So if you wanted to use the chat box, you'll have something like this and they just have it all over the screen. And it's very simple to set up. You just, you know, grab the source and then you have the, the width and height. You can have all this different stuff. You can mess with the visuals. You have all the different type of styles you can do, and it will show you each little preview for each style. And that way you'll be able to figure out which one you want to mess with the most. I personally like box just because it helps me be able to split them up. You can have different background color. You can mess with the font style. There's different things you can do. The customization isn't very wide, but you do have a little bit of customization options. And then also you're going to be probably using like your follower goals or maybe you have a sub goal. So there's, there's definitely a good handful of things you are going to use, but that is really the basics of setting up a scene, right? So you figure out what you want out of all of these little sources, you add them in there and you know, you start building up your canvas. Now, one thing I will say is if you have like, say, for example, you know, starting soon, you know, you got this, maybe you want to throw in some music or whatever. If you're if you're streaming directly off your computer, you can throw in some music and it's going to get pulled in by your desktop audio. So you don't even have to add anything on here. It's just going to get pulled into your desktop audio. As soon as you go into your live scene, you know, you got your webcam going, you got all this stuff up, you got your you got your whole entire canvas the way you want it to look. So you're good there. Now, maybe you have another scene like an intermission and you want to have a webcam there. So now you have to go in and you have to add the webcam. So if you wanted to do that, you would have to go in here, go into video capturing device, click on that, add the device, and then you're going to select your webcam from the drop down. It's not going to automatically bring your webcam in like it did before with all these. So that is definitely something you're going to want to make sure that you're adding in duplicates of sources depending on what you're using on what scene and now for here we have a be right back so more than likely it's just going to be something like this you know you can have it maybe be <clears throat> excuse me you can maybe have it be where the intermission is your brb screen and stuff like that so it kind of shows you and shows the game or maybe it shows just the game and stuff like that 
So there's definitely different types of styles for themes that you can choose for. But depending on, you know, how you have it all set up, it's very easy to bring other sources in. Very easy to go and hide them and delete them and stuff like that. So if you're really struggling with any of this type of stuff, you know, you can always ask me. You can ask the OBS community and other streamers how to go ahead and do stuff like this. I could talk about this type of stuff for, for a very long time because there is a lot of things on here. But it is very user friendly. Don't be intimidated by the massive amount of stuff on this program itself. And like I said, if you want me to go through everything in this section, because this section is very massive in terms of information on what you can do. And that's where it can get really intimidating. But again, it really will require a lot of you guys asking for it. One to 10 people asking for it will not be enough. I would need a lot of people to be asking how to do this just because it will take a lot of time for me to get that video together. And I want to make sure that a lot of people are going to be utilizing it because time is a precious thing. And I definitely want to get more videos out for you guys. So I'll leave that up for you guys to make it a high priority for you as a community inside the comments. But I think that pretty much sums up how to get, you know, your scene and everything created, how to pull some of the most primary things that you're going to use in. I've already kind of gone over some of the other things with the actual uh, program itself. Now, for your dashboard and everything, your dashboard is pretty self-explanatory. I may make a video on that too, but for the most part, everything you need is already here in the package for Streamlabs OBS. But thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate you spending the time watching the video. If you have any questions, be sure to go ahead and take a look around the channel. There's a lot of videos here that talk about streaming to help you guys with streaming. And if you have any questions, feel free to drop a comment on any video that you're watching. And I'll try to get to it as quickly as I can. But I will catch you guys in the next video, next live stream. And we'll see where we go next. Thanks for watching and take care.